Hello and welcome. My name is Tommy Stevens. I'm one of the partners at K2 Enterprises, and we're happy you've stopped by to learn a little bit about Excel's Merge Cells versus Center Across Selection features. Now, these are two long-standing features in Excel. Uh, oftentimes, we find that individuals use the Merge Cells feature to center data. Uh, for example, a, a report header would be a great illustration, but to center data across multiple columns. In fact, while you might get the result that you're looking for using merge cells, I think you will find in this video that center across selection is typically a much better choice, a much better technique, because it does not carry any of the, let's call it baggage, that might be associated with merge cells. Let's jump right into this and show you what we're talking about. Now, as we get started here, just a couple of quick fundamentals. You can indeed use merge cells or center across selection to center data across multiple columns. Of those two choices, merge cells is likely by far and away the more commonly used choice, and that's probably simply because of convenience. Most Excel users have likely been using the merge cells feature uh, for this specific task simply because it's quickly and easily accessible from the home tab of the ribbon. However, if indeed you use the Merge Cells feature, you might notice that it leaves a little bit of, um, shall we say, bitter aftertaste sometimes in our mouth. And for that reason, Center Across Selection is probably the better choice, as we'll demonstrate in just one second. It's probably the better choice in most cases because it doesn't carry any of the same negative consequences that Merge Cells uh, carries. For example, if you're using merge cells, you might find that merge cells can inhibit your ability to sort data. It could inhibit, in some cases, your ability to copy and paste data. It might cause some errors in certain calculations. You might not be able to insert columns uh, into a range depending upon what version of Excel you're using. Uh, and there are several other potential negative consequences associated with merge cells. So let's go into Excel now and show you in real time what the difference between these two techniques would look like and why, perhaps in many cases, if not most cases, center across selection is a better option. Now, as you can see, I have toggled over to a somewhat generic Excel workbook, a very, very simple report we have sitting in this uh, particular worksheet showing in this workbook. And let's begin to talk a little bit about merge cells first. If you'll notice, I have a report header sitting in cell A1 that actually bleeds over into cell B1 entitled Sales by Product. And maybe what I really want is to have that report header centered all the way across columns A through column E. Now, the way this is typically done by most Excel users is we would just select that text and the range over which we want it centered, and we would go to the Home tab of the ribbon in the Alignment group and click on Merge and Center, and that invokes Excel's Merge Cells feature. In this example, Using merge cells causes Excel to treat that entire range of what was A1 through E1. It now treats all of that as cell A1, and cells B1, C1, D1, and E1 technically no longer exist in the Excel workbook. Now, maybe this is not going to be problematic, and in fact, in a very simple example like this, it might not be problematic, but depending upon what version of Excel you happen to be running, more specifically some of the older versions of Excel, using this particular technique right now could pr uh, prohibit me from inserting a column somewhere into that range just simply because we have invoked the Merge Cells feature. Moreover, as we will see momentarily, it could also cause some problems if I start to sort. Let's, for example, focus down here on row number seven. Now, notice I have zero sales for the first and second quarter for product D, whatever product D happens to be. But maybe I don't want those to show as zero. Zero implies that my salespeople literally did not sell anything. Perhaps the real story here was that those products were not yet available for sale. And what I want to do is show those products not available for sale simply with an NA categorization. 
Now, in this example, if I go and say, okay, I want to take that NA categorization and I want to merge that uh, between column B and column C so that we are indeed showing that kind of across both columns, I could use the merge and center feature to do that. However, let's begin to focus on some of these negative consequences. If I have done precisely that, and now I decide I want to sort my data based on first quarter sales, then what we're about to see is that the merge feature is going to block that from happening. To illustrate, I will select this range of data, and then from the Data tab of the ribbon, I am going to choose to sort this data. And uh, in this case, that our, our data does indeed have headers, so that first row we're going to treat as headers. And what I want to say is I want to sort the data based on the first column, based on the cell values in smallest to largest order, or largest to smallest, whichever you prefer. I'll just accept the default. More importantly, notice that when I click OK, Excel says, gee, Tommy, I'm sorry, but you cannot sort that data because you've got a merge cell in there. Now, this is an example of the types of let's call them negative consequences that we sometimes see with merged cells. So let's now turn our attention to how we can potentially solve this by not using merged cells and rather using center across selection instead. To do that, I am indeed just going to hit the undo key a few times to get us back to where we were when we started uh, with this uh, tip. If indeed I want to center sales by product, that report header, across columns A through E, then once again I will start by selecting the text and the range over which I want it centered. Then, from the Home tab of the ribbon, I am going to click on the Dialog Launcher in the Alignment group. And when I click on that Dialog Launcher, I will make sure that I'm focused on the Alignment tab in the Format Cells dialog box, and I will then go to Horizontal, click the drop-down arrow, and choose Center Across Selection. Upon choosing Center Across Selection, I click OK, and now I find that I get the same results that I had with merging cells, but without any of the negative consequences. In fact, cell A1 is still cell A1. Cell B1 maintains its independence, as does cell C1, D1, and E1 notwithstanding the fact that sales by product is centered across the top of all of those column headers. Moreover, if we decide to do the same with product D as we did a few moments ago, that is to say I want to show this as being not available, um, so I go and enter NA in cell B7, but I again want that centered between B7 and uh, C7, then I will do just as I did a few seconds ago, that is, enter the NA now, and I will go and click on the dialog launcher in the alignment group on the home tab of the ribbon, and then from the horizontal drop down arrow, uh, or drop down dialog, I should say, I will choose center across selection and click OK. And now we find that that uh, NA label has indeed been centered. Now, technically, that label resides in cell B7, not in cell C7, but it has been centered so that it appears to, shall we say, straddle the line between B7 and C7. Now, is that going to inhibit or cause me any problems with respect to sorting? Let's go back and check that out. I've selected the range, data tab of the ribbon. I choose to sort. And now I want to sort this data once again based on the values in the first column, based on cell values, smallest to largest, click OK, and see now that I can sort that data without any inhibitions whatsoever. So as you can see, clearly we are getting the same visualization with center across selection as we otherwise get with merge and center, but we're getting it without any of the negative consequences, without any of the negative side effects that are otherwise associated with merge and center. Now with that in mind, I'm going to jump to a different uh, worksheet in this workbook. It looks similar to what we were just working with, but this is in fact a different one. And what I want to point out is notice in this example that sales by product on row one, that has indeed been merged. Okay, so we're dealing with merged cells there. We are also dealing with merged cells down in cell B7 slash C7 where we have the NA. Uh, and, and the example that I want us to go through, and this will be the final example of this tutorial, is 
okay, what if we have a large workbook? How could we find all of the merged cells in a large workbook so we could go back through and change those so that they were no longer merged, but instead uh, we were run running center across selection? We will actually use um, a, an, an age-old tool in Excel to facilitate this for us. I'm going to begin by selecting the entire range that I want to examine. And then, having selected the range that I want to examine, I'm going to choose Find and Select from the Home tab of the ribbon. Now, when I click on Find and Select and choose the Find option there, um, we open up the Find and Replace dialog box. What I want to do in this case is click where it says Format to open the Format Cells dialog box and tell Excel in this example that I want it to go through and identify all of those cells in the selected range where we have merged the cells. So I'm choosing that attribute in the Find Format dialog box. I will click OK. Having clicked OK then, we're ready to say Find All. And when I click Find All, now Excel is showing me that I have merged cells in uh, sheet number two, beginning in cell B7, and also in cell A1. And now that I know that information, I can go through uh, and change those merge cells if I desire. I can change those merge cells and use the center across selection feature. How would we make that change? Pretty simple. Number one, let's go to cell A1, and then we would uh, see that merge and center is active on the home tab of the ribbon. We would deselect merge and center that returns it to its original format, and now then I would go back through and apply center across selection as we were earlier. So in summary, merge cells and center across selection both are long-standing features in Excel. They both apparently give us the same results, but upon a little bit deeper dive into each of those features, we find out that there are significant differences. In general, moving forward, I would suggest that you forsake merge cells in most cases and proceed with center across selection instead. Perhaps the one time when that would not be possible or advisable is if you needed to merge rows together as opposed to columns. Center across selection only works on columns, but merge cells can work on both columns and also on rows. I hope this has been useful. Thank you for stopping by. On behalf of everyone at K2 Enterprises, we hope to serve you again in the very near future.